Hi, and welcome to this episode of Keen Minds, where we're doing our various interviews with various listeners. I'm Jen, a.k.a. Takata Cycle. And I'm Tessa. And today we have with us, say hello, Whipsy. Hello. We're very excited because we, I know Whimsy listens to nearly every podcast waiting for our Saram stuff on, <laughs> on the edge of her seat. <gasps> and boy, did we have a great season for both Aram and, and, uh, and Samar and, and, and um, Saram. <laughs> so tell us your favorite moments. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I liked the opening. The opening of the season was good, um, particularly with that scene in the elevator where poor Aram was like, ah, being pushed back against the wall. Not that I normally go for that, but it was kind of funny to see Samar sort of unable to keep her hands off him for once, because to me, I normally consider her as being quite reserved, so it was a little funny there. I like the ending as well, although there were things I did not like about the ending, but the overall conclusion, they are happily back together again. I was very happy with that. And that was nice. So that was good. What did you think about the engagement and all of uh, the path that they took for the engagement? Uh, that could turn into a rant, is the thing. That's okay. Because <laughs> you've heard me go on enough of them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. See, I've had a rant uh, back from about the middle of season four when Elise came in and I knew the sole reason she was there was to get between them and get them arguing and lead into that and I knew even from that point okay this is going to happen about the season four finale they're going to kiss and make up and everything's going to be right with the world and I hate that so I hate the whole idea that they were arguing and arguing and arguing until they weren't even friends anymore. They could barely talk to each other, barely even look at each other. They got to such a low, and then all of a sudden at the end there, they just stop and they look at each other and they start making out, and that so magically solves all the problems. I'm not a fan of that trope. So it was kind of like a... Like, I was happy, but I wasn't happy. I was so stoked that they were finally a couple. There was a lot of screaming at this end of the world when that scene finally happened. I was like, "Yay!" But I also, think, I why think I heard it didn't have to be done that way. So there Did was you? there yeah. was a lot of that going into season five. Like, I liked the end result, but I did not like how they got to that point. The whole engagement and breaking up and everything to me was just that seemed to me like a total mess. Like when they broke up, predictable. It was a yeah, that and also, for me, it didn't seem right for them because it seemed like the sole reason they broke up was because they both wanted more but didn't realize the other felt the same. And it should have been so easy for them to talk about that, as far as I'm concerned. I feel like they would talk about those things, but clearly they did not. So um, I, was a little, I was a little miffed. So you didn't, you didn't buy that Aram was following advice from uh, the people he shouldn't? namely wrestler and Liz? Well, yes and no. My perspective of it was more like he wanted it but didn't realize he wanted it. Like um, he probably was at the point where he no longer envisioned a future without her per se, but the actual notion of marriage itself didn't cross his mind until it was brought up and then he went, oh yeah. That's what I want, but then they had driven him so far to the point of being an anxious about it that it got a bit out of hand. That was my understanding of it. So, yeah. What was it you called him the other day? An anxious little something. Um, ner or either nervous or anxious little little bun or something. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. You cupcakes. Cupcakes. Normally, I call them cupcakes. I, it was in... Um, Whimsy is amazing. She is she's doing my bedding for my, my massive story, and so... There was a scene where Rom was just rambling on, and she was <laughs> amused. <laughs> They're usually variations of Oh, Aram, you precious cupcake. <laughs> he is. Cinnamon roll which, cupcake. <laughs> which one is your favorite character between the two of them? Don't make me decide. They're like my favorite children. <laughs> uh, maybe Samar. Samar was the one, I think. Oh, I don't know. 
actually, because Aram was on the show first, and at that point it was him and Mira that were my two favourite characters. I didn't ship them, but they were my two favourite characters. And then, of course, Mira died, and I was devastated. And Samar turned up, and I was like, okay, I like you, but also you kind of remind me of Ziva from NCIS, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, but then a couple of episodes in, I sort of fell in love with Samar, and I think it varies from episode to episode. Sometimes I like one more than the other, and every other episode it switches based on what they're doing. Because as much as I love them, they both have things that I don't like, or do silly things that go make me go, why? Why would you do that? Especially last season. Season four was not fun. <laughs> why? Because of Elise? I loved Elise. <laughs> I liked... I liked the idea of Elise, that she was this badass spy girl, and she was also quite tiny, and I'm quite tiny, so I was like, yes, tiny people can actually do things. Um, I didn't like that her character was used to be a wedge between them and especially drive them to the point that it did. I think if it hadn't driven them to that low as badly, I would have been okay with Elise. So I liked her as in her own right, but that was about it. I, I thought that I liked what what uh, ended up happening to Aram with her. Because Aram was, you know, basically a resident nerd. He was, you know, the, he was all talk and, and basically almost like to be in his head and all that. And then with Elise, he, he got finally to an anger moment. That, that got him from needing the the surgery the 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 uh the psychologist at the beginning when he killed the terrorist that was about to kill Liz to to the point where he actually goes at the architect and just fires a bazooka out of him it wasn't even a bazooka it was like a a, a titanium rod at the car a rocket it was launcher awesome. rocket launcher <laughs> yeah it was awesome yeah, I, and I, I think thought, I thought that at least had a part of that because it got it. It made him lose his innocence. Mm. She served him well as far as his character development went, but it was it was it was good, but it was hard to watch. It was like a train wreck where I couldn't look away, but I really really wanted to. So, yeah. and, and it's what, been a roller coaster. How about your favorite scenes from from? Uh, uh, the seasons from each season because we're five seasons in and, and these two characters have gone they have. from you know one point probably I would say that in the entire series the characters who have had the most change in terms of where they really began not where they appear to be but where they really were are the two Samara and Aram I think a lot of the other characters have had a lot of change as well, especially like Wrestler's Ride this season when he's gone from being very black and white at the start of the series to now he's, you know, he's so slowly fading into the shades of grey in some aspects. But yeah, Samar and Aram have changed a bit. I will always be a sucker for the fluffy scenes and I know you're not a shipper, Tessa. <laughs> um, nope. But but I, I am. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like the fun ones. I do like the fluffy ones, but it's the fun ones that I really love. So that scene, I can't for the life of me remember what episode it was. Actually, no, I tell a lie. I think it was the thrushes, where at the end there they were eating the tacos. Yes. I really enjoyed that. That was a nice one. You could actually see them smiling and laughing, which we don't get a lot. Um, my ship herself will always have to say I liked that hospital scene in season two. Where they held hands, how could I not like that? I mean, but I think the thing with the tacos was probably my favorite thing. And any moment where you get a little bit of humor or Samar's kind of dry sass coming in there, like, um, oh, especially this season when he gave her the ring and then right afterwards she goes, shall we eat? And he goes, what, like, eat? And she goes, yes, food. So I like that. I throw a lot of those jokes in a lot when I try and write fanfics. She says try. She says try like she's not amazing at it. Well, eh, on occasion. I have moments. I may be very far behind in Reset, but it is a very good fic. For any of our Saram fans out there, 
Go check out Whimsy's, um, it's called Reset. It's amazing. There is a cliffhanger in the chapter I recently posted, and there hasn't been a lot of cliffhanger rage in responses yet. I've oh. had one, and I posted that chapter. I was like, now, I'm waiting for all the cliffhanger rage, and then there was it's one. so sad. I'm sorry. I love cliffhanger rage. Like, it's not a good I day. I so you disappointed. Get, you, you kind of almost want those threats to come, you know? Right? <laughs> You're bizarre, <laughs> you two. <laughs> Writers were an odd lot. <laughs> mm. It's funny because I put a comment at the end of that chapter. I was like, oh, did I forget to warn you there was a cliffhanger? My bad. There's a cliffhanger. And then people just assume sorry, it no, with sorry. mine. People just assume there's a cliffhanger on mine. <laughs> See, I'm nicer than that. I don't do a cliffhanger in every chapter. It's like every yeah. 10 chapters, maybe. <laughs> I, it's, it's a rarity that there isn't one in mine, so... So, be, be, you know, not being a shipper, I, I know that you've answered a lot of shipper questions, but how about what is your least favorite, just one character, not them as a couple, but each one of them, the one moment of them that you absolutely hated it? See, I don't know. They're, uh, even the two... Even Samar and Aram, who I love, they have had they have each had things that they've done or said that I really didn't like or disagree with. And I think in balance, they all have about the same level of things that I like or don't like. And I really try not to, especially on Tumblr, I try not to say anything negative about any character, even when they drive me nuts. Because I'm like, you know what, as much as I don't like them, someone else likes them, and I don't want to hurt feelings, because I know how annoyed I would be if someone started raging about Samar, or Aram, but mostly Samar. <laughs> I get very defensive of Samar, I must say. So, I don't know, I think, I do agree with Jen that I'm very put out with Reddington this season, especially. I have been for about the last, almost two seasons, I think. It started with it's Kate probably... with me. Yeah. See, there we go. We could mix up my name there. <laughs> um, Liz, I get a little annoyed with on occasion, but it's not so much her as just the writing of her is very inconsistent, and I get annoyed at that. Why would do you think that's inconsistent? Oh, well, simply because some days she's she seems very clever and makes sound decisions, very logical decisions. And then other days she's written in a style that's very like Mary Sue or damsel in distress or I don't know. She just, the way she expresses emotions and deals with problems to me, it's just, it's a bit all over the place. Though to be fair, to be fair to Liz, she has been through a lot. So that I'll would make sense of all I can think of right now is she's done it a couple times recently where she's just, I mean, looked and go, it can't be. And <laughs> so the ones that have gotten me lately <laughs> talking yeah. about the damsel in distress sort of, you know, it's, it can't be possible. And it's like, okay, that's, <laughs> uh, that's not the Liz we know and love. <laughs> I do. I did enjoy season one, Liz, the best, I must say, though this season she was very badass in Alaska, and that was very enjoyable to watch. <laughs> Home Alone, she, Murder Edition. <laughs> yeah. She, was it, she set someone on fire or something? Uh, two people, actually. Two people. I it, and I can't remember. Two. two. Yeah. Two? Two people. One with yeah. a flare gun, and the other one by uh, luring them into a cellar and then closing the door and throwing That's up the one. A bomb. That's the one I'm thinking of. That was fun. I enjoyed I that. love the flare gun. <laughs> the flare gun was fun. Yeah, that guy had it coming, though. I mean, like, he just wouldn't die. Oh. <laughs> and, and the glass in the ice. I, yeah. I thought that was That great. was the same was guy with the flare my gun. Favorite. Yeah. No. Yeah. That guy that, died. No, the glass in the ice. He was choking on it the whole time. That was the guy that she got with the flare gun. The that was the last one. She put glass in them. That was clever. I really like that. Because it was badass, but it was it was very subtle and discreet, unlike just full-on setting a guy on fire. So, I enjoyed that. 
She was just trying to mourn. I mean, come on. <laughs> Let the woman Leave mourn. Leave her in peace. Leave her alone. <laughs> let her murder in peace. Break. Yeah, let her murder in peace. She is a character needs a break. Oh gosh, I think yes. she needs a nice, like, vacation somewhere. That's what with I said. no drama. It's, I, they, they should have kept Tom alive. They should have faked his death so that after everything's done, they could just go to a beach somewhere and be like, nope. <laughs> not but dealing like, with this. <laughs> as much as I agree with that, whether we have Tom or not, I think Liz just needs a Fair. break. Whether it's with Tom or whether it's part of her mourning his loss, she needs a break. Because every time she gets past something, they throw something else at her. Oh, she's I too want bad. a happy Love Liz for one episode. Uh, wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I want all the characters just to have one moment where something good happens for them, even if it's something very small. But, I mean, look at them. Wrestler, was Wrestler happy when Prescott got roasted no. by by uh, Red? He should have been like, oh, man, I mean, this is great. I actually got out of this in one piece with my reputation intact and the bad guy got roasted. That's, That's a perfect wrestler, outcome. Though. Because for Wrestler, it's like... That was wrong. That was illegal. That's not how it works. I'm not going to be happy about that. It's it's more of his moral compass versus yeah. what everybody and what what he's feeling, what he's seeing inside versus what everyone else sees on him. He's not. It doesn't make him happy. I think for problems to be solved that way, it's not in his character because he for him it's very much justice. Yes, he needs that, but it needs to be done in what in his mind is the right way, and to him that was not it. Hmm. So it's so it's kind of like the way I see Saram, and I'm going to make that jump. Yes, well, I liked the, the end result was good, but I didn't like the way it happened. So I think in terms of wrestler with Prescott, yes, the end result was good. He no longer had the Prescott problem, but he didn't like the way that eventuated. Neither you or wrestler are ends justify the means type people. No. No. Uh let me ask you something, because I've been actually pretty in two minds. I wouldn't say I'm bothered by it. I, I, I understand it. When Samar gets taken by the crazy guy and the rats, oh, here we go. she does so because she makes a mistake. She goes at him, and the guy surprises her. It was a, it was almost a rookie mistake. And I know that things like that would happen to any season agent. I mean, one time you yeah. will, you know, you will be tired. Your mind will be somewhere else. You were worried about the kid too much. She gets hit on the head, and that was very rookie of her. And then she must have been. Uh, have had some head injury and she gets at the guy hits him and instead of taking the gun and shooting him immediately um he, she doesn't do that so what are your feelings about that kind of writing and then we got the bear of course all that so the bear spe <laughs> oh yeah specifically the bit where she was shoved in the back of the van is that the bit mm -hmm. you mean yeah yes see for me I did actually struggle with that because I know when I saw that, I thought that she shouldn't have been taken that easily. And it didn't make sense to me that she was taken in the first place because I, to this day, I still can't figure out why the guy did take her. Why didn't he just leave her unconscious in the car park? Because the rats, his rats were getting too long teeth. He needed something to uh, to chew on, and he needed to study the composition of a body attacked by rats. He, yeah, he said, "That's for him to take her of all people for that purpose. It seems incredibly opportunistic. And if she's fighting him in that situation, surely he can. If he's got any degree of common sense, which I know is not actually all mm -hmm. that common, wouldn't he think that?" Surely there are easier targets to grab for that purpose that aren't going to fight back as hard. Then so was so for me that whole, yeah, for me that whole thing was a bit, eh, a bit, a bit funny. And 
for me it was just they conveniently put it in there just to work towards the whole Samar and Aram thing at the end. Um, I wouldn't have called the bit where she shoved in the back of the van. I didn't think that was a rookie mistake so much as maybe the guy just got a lucky shot in and happened to hit her in the head. And mm-hmm. as with anyone, once you get hit in the head, it's a bit, it is harder to fight back. Um, it does daze you. So I think it maybe comes down to that. Because we've seen other episodes where she's gone at someone on her own and fought them in a similar fashion and she hasn't been hit in the head and she's been fine. Um, so I wouldn't have said it was a rookie mistake so much as just very unlucky on her part and very opportunistic on his. So Yeah, but she put herself in that situation. I mean, she put herself in a situation where this guy hit her and this is not oh yeah well he's a he's a cleaner but he's not a i mean you're not talking a mossad trained guy uh, you know cia badass it's just he wasn't he was a bit daft the entire episode yeah so i was just gonna say yeah i think he's just lucky he got a lucky shot in and it worked in his favor because he landed it on her head and then she was dazed and it makes her a lot harder for her to fight back and just went steadily downhill from there. Is is that why you think that why she... Why literally? Uh, <laughs> is that why you think yeah. that she stopped running? Uh, when she got away from him, is that why you think she stopped running in the woods? Because that was my question on it. That was the biggest thing that was the holdup for me. Partly yes and no. It was a combination of she was injured and dazed, but at the same time, she didn't have a whole lot of options insofar as where to run. There wasn't a lot of options in terms of taking cover and she did know he had a gun and he was willing to shoot it. And Samara's one of those people where you know you've got to, you have to pick your battles. And I think she just realized that, yes, getting away was important, but once she got out of that van and realized what was surrounding it, she didn't have a whole lot of options and that wasn't a battle she was going to win. And so I think it was more, she figured, okay, let's change tactics, go back, let him grab her so that she can then, that's why she then grabbed the stick up her sleeve so that she could then stab him and try something else. If one plan is not working, you try something else. I think she was thinking that mindset. She ran and then realized this isn't working, switch tactics. Because it wasn't, it was, it was what, forest, but it was very, it wasn't overly dense. Um, there, it was not a very, it was a very sparsely populated area. So calling for help wouldn't have worked very effectively. She didn't know where she was. So she, as much as she could run, like where was she going to run to? And those trees were very slim. They didn't offer a whole lot of cover. So I think she just figured, okay, this isn't working. Switch to something else. That makes sense. Yeah. Not grabbing the gun still bothers me, though. Well, she, she had a stick. So, a very sharp stick. Yeah, but at that moment, when he lets go of the gun, she should have picked up the gun instead of run. Hmm. She's been hit in the head. Samar would have been concussed. If she was hit on the head that hard, that she was unconscious that long, she would have been concussed. And I have been concussed myself a few times. I know how this works. A few times. Um, <laughs> a few times. Um, and that does affect, yeah, it does affect your reasoning a little bit. You do get a bit dopey. And it, just even being unconscious that long, you're a little bit dopey after you wake up. I thought it was pretty impressive that she did what she did to get out of the van in that state. So... Once she's run for a while as well, I think that dopiness would have kicked in. So she wasn't perfect in that getaway. She didn't grab the gun, but in the scheme of what, like, in the scheme of things, what she did do under those circumstances was pretty impressive. She certainly didn't give up at any point. So I was like, yes, keep fighting. All right, give give me your favorite Aram episode and your favorite Samar episode. Um, that's a hard one because in every case there's especially as far as Samara is concerned I would say I liked 307 Zal bin Hassan with all the backstory with her brother but then I did not like the ending (laughs) 
Why? I what I rewatched that episode and we get to the the end scene with wrestler and like I'm just gonna stop the episode right here. I don't. Oh know. oh, <laughs> that end scene. Well, I just pretend that didn't happen. Stupid mistakes. I mean, mm, have you it's not true. made a kind of stupid mistake in a moment when you are emotionally? Not for sure. But once I've seen the episode one time, I'm like, I don't need to see that part again. So I'll just watch that episode and enjoy the rest of the episode for what it is, because I really liked the rest of it. And then I just don't need to repeatedly watch that mistake happen over and over again. <laughs> How about Aram? Well, Aram is tricky because he always has smaller moments. I did like... Um, season four the thrushes where elise got a bit of a butt kicking mm-hmm. before he then went back to her again and i was in pain what quack um, bitch yeah quack quack bitch and some of the lines of what part of banana did you not understand <laughs> oh my gosh yes <laughs> i like when he's referring to the episode it's a, it's a crying like a baby that needs a diaper change <laughs> yes i like the moments where we get we see Aram is not a pushover because quite a lot we see he is a lot more reserved. He is, he seems like a pushover, but he's not, not because he's not weak or anything. He's just very, he's just very happy go lucky. He cares about making sure everyone else is happy and he does what he thinks needs to be done for everyone. But then we have these rare moments where you push just the right button and you get that response from him. And you know he's not a pushover. He's just picky about when he lets it out. Mm. So he does have that inner fire. Like we saw in um, season three where he changed the passcode to the box to protect Liz. And then when she did come out, he held the, the gun to the director and he had the snot coming out of his face and everything. He was not going to give in in that situation unless he absolutely had to and then we see the moment like as you mentioned the firing of the bazooka in season Mm -hmm. four so i like those moments where we get just aram sort of losing it a little bit and you can see he's not a pushover i I do enjoy those moments jen how about you you've been very quiet (laughs) how about you some both of them or yeah. um well i mean obviously i everybody knows i'm a tom fan i loved the the tom and aram moments <laughs> like that was the bro ship i didn't know that i needed because <laughs> i've always been a big tesla fan with with russ and tom but when he and aram started talking outside the uh the chapel right before the um round two wedding um <laughs> uh just Oh my precious little cinnamon roll where he's like just stumbling over everything and then catching himself and trying not to make it sound like he's saying something that your he's not Your favorite your favorite scene. Um I don't know if that's my very favorite. Oh gosh. There's so many good ones though. Um one one of my favorite moments was uh was him saying, patience, patience, and Tom going, sometimes you're a little too patient, <laughs> talking about a, a Samar. Oh, uh, uh, right after the, the man should write a book? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that was the same scene. <laughs> yeah. But How um, about uh, how about Samar? Your favorite Samar scene or episode? Ooh. Um... I loved Samar coming in in the thrushes when when she came after Elise. Like I like Elise. I like her for what she was, for what where they got it and everything. I liked her as a character, but I just loved that look that she got in her eyes when she's just like, nope. <laughs> and wrestlers going, hold on, <laughs> I'll handle it. Oh my god, don't shoot the perp. <laughs> I mean, she was vicious in that moment. It was it was glorious. It was a little moment. Um... A couple of episodes later, I think it was The Architect, where Elise comes back, and it's that episode where Aram is undercover in the, whatever that thing was, the computery thing that I don't understand, because I'm not the a mass. computer The Black mass. That's the one. And 
at the end there after Aram's gone and Samar and Wrestler come in and then Elise pops up and Res- and sorry and Samar's instant reaction is just stop and she turns and she puts a hand on her hip where her gun is and there's this moment of there's this split second of I'm about to shoot you. <laughs> that that's was her, good. That's her go to reaction whenever she sees Elise, yeah. which is entirely appropriate. <sighs> Um, I also it, loved the, the conversation they had um, w- when Aram was being held uh, in contempt. And mm. she talked about feeding his turtle, and they had that conversation with her leaning against the bars, and it just... It was so beautiful. And, I, and we d- haven't heard anything about the turtle since then. Well, neither have we heard about the cat. We, don't, we still don't know where Hudson ended up. I mean, animals do not fare well on the blacklist. <laughs> And your favorite uh, Ram moment? Uh, that's what I said. Uh, the um, Probably the moment where the uh, patience, patience. You're a little too oh, patient. Okay. Well, big... you're going to be surprised at mine because I think that my favorite Samar moment is the moment in Salbin Hassan where she realizes um, that her what her brother is and then that whole scene that goes from she hiding to to the moment where she tells when she's on the dock and they're gonna take her they're gonna torture her and and that moment where she realizes uh you can take him my brother died Mm. and i i love that moment i thought that was it was finely acted it was it was very very um strong even though it was very subtle so i I love that moment my favorite around moment is the moment where he's with dembe and dembe has kidnapped him and aram and aram says i can't do it and dembe just says go and he slits down and aram is terrified and he turns around and he looks at him and it was it spoke volumes when he just stops and says, there's something I can do. And then they have that hilarious scene uh, at the um, at the, the uh, uh, agency that, that had the locks, and it was great. And I would, uh, another bro ship that I didn't realize I needed, so, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also, by the way, somewhere in there, Aram found out that Dimbe's last name is Zuma. Because in one of the, I think it's the second episode when Dimbe is introduced, well, what's his last name? No, it's just Dimbe, like Madonna, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, somewhere, um, no, I guess they, they did was learn. The, was it the pilot or the, no, it was the second, second episode, episode of the in. series where they said he had no last name. Yeah. And um, then ever since then, he's had a last name. Yeah. I was no, no, the, the agency, uh, the Interpol didn't have a last name or... Cooper said that he didn't have a last name, which is whatever you choose to think about Cooper, he keeps secrets. And we haven't seen a lot of what Cooper knows. I think he knew perfectly well that he was, that he had a last name, but just chose not to say it. But I did like that little moment where he called him Agent Zuma. 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 Yeah. Sir. (laughs) Yeah. It was I'm, that was I'm a beautiful amazed scene. around pulled that off. Oh, he's great undercover. It's just kind of surprising. Oh, um one of my favorite Aram moments is when he jumped in the car to go save Samar and realized he couldn't drive. <laughs> I can't, I can't drive. <laughs> that was amazing. And then but he can drive now. I know, but then it's a nice parallel to him jumping in the car to go save Samar and he's field ready now, so he can drive. Because I wondered uh, when, when that happened, when he said he wanted to, to become field field ready, I said, oh, I wonder if he'll learn how to drive. Surely he'll know how to drive. And then he did, and I went, we know! <laughs> now yeah, we I know. I don't think they would class anyone as field ready if they couldn't drive. I don't know. Tom can't swim. <laughs> so. No. Yeah. He said he, Tom can't swim. Do we know that to be true? Uh, you know what? It was never, never contradicted. <laughs> Because at that point, she didn't know he was anything but an elementary school teacher. Oh, no, teacher. no, she knew. Uh, that was... Oh, that, no, that was season two. Yeah, it was season yeah. two. Um, but he bought a boat. I mean, yeah. do you really... I mean, how stupid do you really need to be to buy a boat when you don't know how to swim? 
Eh. I still, I like the idea that he can't swim. They never said anything else, so. They probably never thought about it again. I, I think that the fandom thinks a lot harder on that one than the writers ever did. <laughs> That's another yeah. one I can't get around, I can't get my head around, because here yeah, everyone knows how to drive and everyone knows how to swim, and if I hear a fully grown adult say they can't swim or they can't drive, I'm just like, how? Uh, to be I fair, you, you well, do they, live on an island, and so minute, swimming they, is kind of a necessity. <laughs> they, did, they did address it again. Because he tells Gina, I'm tired of seeing people uh, drown. Mm. No, that's not addressing. That's not addressing. No, but it's not, it's not being forgotten. It's not being forgotten. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Uh, it has now. They killed him. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because after 508, it can't be a podcast if we don't say that. <laughs> it really can't. It's kind of like a redemption podcast. It wasn't a redemption podcast unless we were ooing and aahing over Eddie Gathegi. It can't be a black. Well, a blacklist if we're not saying, but it kill him. If Five Jen's not better. happens to be one of my favorite episodes. I thought it was brilliantly done. I've watched it God knows how many times. No. I need to do a rewatch of Redemption. I haven't actually watched it again. Because I watched the series and then I rewatched it one time right after it finished, and then I haven't watched it again since, and I need to do that. Okay, what is your favorite overall episode from all five seasons? Oh, I know. Tough questions. Asking the real tough questions now. I don't know. It's. I'm in pain. This is impossible. <laughs> All right. The whole thing is going to be erased. And you can only choose one episode to see again. And after that, every digital copy will disappear. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> it would still be something with a good Saram moment because because I don't think I could call myself a quality Saram shipper if my answer to favorite episode did not have a Saram scene in it. That's totally um, fair. <laughs> That's... <laughs> maybe the season four finale, maybe, maybe, but only because that's when they finally become a thing at the end, and that was just a moment where I was, as soon as I saw that, I jumped up and I was, had my hands in the air going, victory! <laughs> but uh, but that was just for that one scene. Was there other episodes that I really liked overall? Actually, you know what? I can answer this question. Well, almost. It's a tie between Grace and Blaze, and I think um, the episode in season three, they had the, um, it was the two-parter mid-season thingamajig the first half of that i like that one with i can't remember the number was it episode eight or episode nine they directed nine. nine nine i liked that one even though those didn't have uh huge saram moments in i like that one as an i like those two as overall episodes um because i like episodes where we get all the characters they all have a moment i really like when we've got a balance there and they both had that sort of fun heist feel, which I also really love. Every time we get a heist episode, I get very excited. Um, so yeah, I like that one. I like seeing all the characters have their moments, even the ones I don't necessarily like quite as much. Um, What's your least favorite uh, character? Least, you've already asked me this. No, I asked you about least the least favorite, favorite moment. People don't like to be asked about that. They all have things I like and don't like. I am put out with Reddington as much as I love him. At the moment, I am just a bit like, he needs to give, he needs to give something at the moment. Have feelings yeah. on Jennifer? I like her. I do. I like her. I am living for the badass sisterhood dynamic duo we're going to get next season. I can't wait for that. I was a little bit put out before the season finale where it looked like Jennifer and Liz were at loggerheads with one another. And then we got to, she came in right at the end of the season finale. And I actually was like, yes, she's here. 
that was the one thing I was not expecting in that episode. And then she popped up and I was so excited and they were working together the whole time. And I was like, that's the best ever. That was my favorite moment. Aside from the Saram engagement, my favorite, ep- my favorite part of that episode was when Jennifer turned up and they were working together the whole time. It was so nice. you are looking forward to seeing uh, them trying to take Red down. Oh, yes. Well, not so much taking Red down, but them working together and being badass together. That's what I'm looking forward to. Whether it's taking Red down or whether it's doing something else badass, I'm not as worried about, but I am looking forward to seeing them working together. Because I think Liz needs that, and I think Jennifer needs that, and frankly, I need that, because we don't get enough moments of Liz and Samar being badass together, and I'm all for fabulous Pink and perfect. gal pals. Pink and perfect. Exactly. Except not pink and not perfect. I love that scene with them. That's one of my favorite Liz and Samar scenes, yeah. is that is her handing him the, the uh, rent bill. <laughs> See, that was a great moment. We don't get enough of the characters like Liz and Smart, Jennifer, those kind of badass ladies. We don't get enough of them just working together and being just being awesome together. I, For lack a of a mirror, better word. You're a Mira admirer. Um, do you know that I have a theory on Mira? That Mira oh. was actually uh, Peter's original spy on the task force. That wouldn't surprise me, actually. And then I mean, I, the, she didn't get killed because she was the first one being killed. She was killed because she was supposed to be the one killed. They were cleaning up. That's possible. I haven't actually looked into the season one episodes with enough detail to look into Mira specifically because I think I was looking for everything else at that point. But that's interesting. I need to rewatch season one now. I love season one. Season one was great. She just when when Diane Fowler threw her under the bus by having mm. her being the one signing the the order, she threw Diane back under the bus by giving Red her name. Well, I'm sorry. If someone threw me under the bus, I'm gonna throw them right under the bus back. <laughs> right so there, there, there. Right there, and probably also with a little extra hard push. Why not? Take you with me. If I gotta go, I'm taking you with me. <laughs> exactly. Oh, interesting. So you're not you're not like oh no surprise. Yeah, I have a feeling that when when the show ends, if they end it the way they want to end, I think we're gonna get a few surprises in a yeah. few tide of losing loose ends that are still there. List keeps growing. I would like to be surprised. Because at the moment, there have been a lot of things I have not been surprised by. And I was disappointed that I wasn't surprised. That they went with the thing that I thought they were going to do. And for me, okay, my one thing with the imposter theory reveal at the end of this season was they hyped up, they hyped it up and hyped it up for weeks in advance of the finale saying, we're going to have something that nobody has been expecting. And if they're going to do that, the thing it is... The one thing it shouldn't be is the thing that half the fandom has been expecting for three years in advance, or however long it was. But that theory has been very common. So when they brought that out, I was like, really? That's the one thing it should never have been. Well, they, they said like something interesting. In the show. I, I agree. I think that a lot of the things have been telegraphed a little too much. Mm. But then there, there are things like my, my favorite uh, thing with, with uh, uh, and this is not about the show, this is actually about the fandom, is we were handed in 508 something that was to me fundamental in understanding Red, and nobody paid any attention to it. Then I'd be yelling at the top of my lungs about Tom being a undercover CIA agent because there's no way that Fitch could have learned that the task force was in and nobody listens i'm like ah it's there listen it's there but then again i've been wrong about so many things what's one more i do not think that tom was a cia agent worked with them perhaps but not certainly not an agent i think it would undermine a lot of his story Mm -hmm. 
Uh, how do you explain that Fitch knew? That Fitch knew what? That the task force was in danger. He was a highly ranked CIA... Uh, National Security Advisor. Like, what would you call that? Um, but yeah, he's super he highly ranked in the, in the intelligence. He didn't know who Berlin was until Red gave him the name. I, I do not think, Tom. After. CIA. And there is only there is only two people who knew that that Ber fake Berlin had the task had the list. Fake Berlin and Tom, and not a, a few. The next scene, Fitch is going in there and telling them, you know, the task force is at risk. Red gets out, and the first thing he does with blood on his face is calling Liz and telling him the la the task force is at risk. How do we know that, that they were the only two that knew about the, the list? We don't know because, that. Because Tom had just given the list to fake Berlin. And there were people all around that could have seen it. I mean, there, was, there were the people that were working there. There was the people they were calling to do the hits. I mean... Okay, so the fake, fake Berlin, the assassin given the task, and Tom. And immediately, and potentially after, others, because we don't know how many people were around there. There's okay. How many people I'm could have reached Fitch? Was what Fitch I'm read into the existence of the task force earlier on? He was against giving Red immunity. Yeah, he he was he was part of that circle um, that that was sitting around when Diane Fowler signed off on giving giving and the against, task force. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm fuzzy on some of the things from season one because I haven't rewatched yeah, it. It's, in a it's while. been a while. Yeah. Yeah. But if he was read in right from the start, wouldn't he have been briefed or at least aware of some of the happenings around the task force by the mm -hmm. time Berlin became a thing? But how, when, but at that time, Berlin was supposed to be dead. He was supposed to have died in the river. And then fake Berlin called Tom, asked for the list. And the next scene, he gives them the list, and the next scene, Fitch goes to Red and says, the task force is a target. Uh, they left What's-His-Name alive in, in uh, Russia, didn't they? The one that they thought was, uh, was uh, the Decemberist? No, they kill him. Did they kill him? Yeah. To what end did you meet? To his, it turns out. Mm. It's a great price. I don't know who wrote that episode, but it was really good. Probably Buckingham. Yeah, it's I, you know, I'm. It's a kind of like little things that let that tells me maybe I'm completely wrong. Lord knows I've been wrong way before in this show, and I'll continue to be wrong. But it just seemed like oh, I don't know. Maybe there are details that. A level that we're not seeing. I don't think that, that Tom worked for the CIA. I do think that he probably contracted from time to time because he talked about it in Redemption that mm -hmm. he had worked with, uh, what's her name, uh, the, the CIA operative. And so, I mean, we know that he contracted with them, but I also believe that the major had ties to various militaries and various organizations and probably contracted out to them on a fairly regular basis. So it would, ma it would make sense that his operatives were working with U.S. agencies with foreign agencies all over, you know. I mean that and that makes sense. Anyone in those circle has, circles has got contacts everywhere, in yeah. every agency around the world. Little birdies. <laughs> yeah, government or non-government. So they would have contacts that they would ask little favors for, and there would be little whispers going through the grapevine. They would hear things. And especially if they are read into certain operations, I think they would pay more attention to whispers relating to some matters over others. So it could have been that. Like, I wouldn't have said that Tom worked for the CIA. I would have said Tom worked with the CIA. Um, I'm not sure how that connects up with Fitch, because, again, I'm fuzzy, and it's too early in the morning for this. <laughs> yes, Wh Whimsy was very kind, since she's on the uh, the other side of the world. She got up at 7 a.m. for us. To <laughs> no, 6 620, I oh, got sorry. up. Sorry, sorry. Yes. 620. I don't want to take away anything from that. It was still dark outside. <sighs> oh. Thank you. We, we do appreciate 
enormously. We do. It's very exciting. Well, uh, Whimsy was actually one of the first people to show interest in this when we first started pitching the idea to each other. I mentioned it to her, and she went, I'll go on! Yes! I'll get on at any time! <laughs> I would have woken up at 2 in the morning for this. I would rather have not woken up at 2 in the morning, but I would have if I needed to. Thank you. We appreciate the level of commitment. We do. Yeah, we, we do have listeners in, in Poland, uh, I think in Czechoslovakia, I think. I think we have one or two from Russia. Uh, we certainly have, uh, I think, two or three from Paris. So it's pretty yeah. exciting. We get around. Yeah, apparently so. Goodness. Well, the Blacklist is quite a popular show around the world. Yeah. Most of the anons I get on Tumblr, surprisingly, are not American. Uh, yeah, I get quite a few. And well, I don't get nearly as many anons as I used to. But back when I did, I, I I believe that a lot of them were tended to be from from all over. Um, Not you know, non-American. Yes, uh, that, that English was the second language. Um, and then you'd have someone that it's would apologize. Well, you'd have someone that would apologize for their their poor English. I'm going. I know native English speakers that. You knock, English you knock well. out of the park, you know, like I didn't even know that that wasn't your native language. So <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, and then you get the one weird Australian, me. <laughs> but we love you. You're the cool Australian. <laughs> I try. Oh, I think all Australians are cool. I have not met an Australian yet that is not absolutely crazy and fantastic. <laughs> but that's part of being cool. Oh, yes. No, I say that in all the best ways. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are driven to the craziness simply because everything here is always trying to kill us. So, <laughs> what more do you expect? But you've got quackers. I have quackers, yes. <laughs> You're the cutest But, things. I mean, they are, they are only in my state. So, the rest of Australia has, they don't even have that. Really? Okay, really? I know where I'm going if I go to Australia then. Because I want to see quackers. <laughs> This is entirely Whimsy's fault. Whimsy got me obsessed with quackas. What are quackas? <gasps> They're so uh, cute! <laughs> you're gonna have to Google this later. They're like a little marsupial. They're probably not much bigger than my head. And they are sort of known as the world's happiest animal because they always look like they're smiling and they're so cute and fluffy. <laughs> I bet they're deadly though. No, they're not. They're one of the few things in Australia that's not deadly. <laughs> Didn't you say ah. that they're endangered because people, like, they, they have no sense of danger and so they keep getting killed off or something like that? Yeah. Well, I, I can't remember if they're endangered. I think they might be. I'm really not good at remembering things like that. But you they said it's illegal to, live, it's illegal to they, go touch them, right? Yeah, because they predominantly live on one island just off. My state it is part of my state, but it's not on, like, the mainland part. Um, and so they are, they are definitely a protected species. So when you're there, you're not allowed to touch them. But the thing is, they will walk right up to you and try and touch you, and you just have to, like, <laughs> don't touch them back. <laughs> because there are fines for that. It might be worth it, though. <laughs> yes. Oh, I don't know. So considering how happily they will come up to you, I don't think you need to reach out to them. You can just, if you sit still long enough, they will come up to you, which That's is where fair. the quacker selfies come in. You just lie there and wait with your phone ready, and then one comes up and you go, snap! These things are adorable. I want a quacker. <laughs> like, I want to bring one home. <laughs> Find her. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Worth it. Intention fine. Intention fine. Worth it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Whimsy, for coming on and talking about Saram and Samar and Aram and thank all you for their, having me. All their loveliness. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's been that was a awesome. quieter yay. That was a what? That was a quieter yay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, until next time. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.